All right, awesome. Athen, I appreciate you joining me today. Um, yeah, of course. I want to know, like, well, if, before we get started, can you just, you know, introduce yourself, tell people where you're from, just a little bit about you? Okay, so my name is uh, Athen Flagtu. I'm from uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland area. I'm about an hour south of Washington, D.C., so... Um, I've been like a lifelong kind of entrepreneur business person. I have a DJ entertainment company that I started when I was like 14. Uh, I've been running that, kind of tapering it off um, just because I've been trying to get into more and more passive things. I was always looking for passive income. Um, I did like personal training as well. Um, moved that from in person to like um, in efforts to be passive. I moved it to online training. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was doing plans with people online and stuff like that. Uh, but then that became very time demanding as well. So then I'm still doing that, trickled that out. Um, but then I saw a quote, I mean, I've been doing that for years and then I saw a quote by, um, I think it was Warren Buffett that said, um, if you, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. Yep. And I, I saw that yep. and something just clicked and I was like, damn. I, was like, I gotta figure this out. <laughs> so, wait, before we get in that, like, what's your? You have a nine to five? Yeah. So, my nine to five. Um, I'm an IT technician at NASA. Um, so we do lots of hardware support. Um, You're a smart for, guy. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I pull my own weight. You know what I mean? You're, I do my job. You're a buff guy and a smart guy. <laughs> I, I, I try. I try my best. You know. So, um, that's my nine to five. I drive about an hour and a half to work and back it's about an hour and a half to two hours back but i love the job so you know it's worth it but it's not my end game by any means right right um so you heard the, the quote from buffett you read the quote from buffett and that how long ago did that how long ago was it when you read that where you got interested in like oh crap well, like i said i was always for the past like two years i always knew that i wanted something completely passive well, of course, there's nothing that's completely passive, but you know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Um, so in the back of my head, I was always keeping eyes out for something because as an entrepreneur, you know, you just have an idea, but you're always like scanning. You know yeah. what I mean? For like yeah, all the time. <laughs> so um, I, was, I was probably, it was super late at night, probably midnight, two in the morning, something like that. And I saw that quote and then I was like thinking, and then your videos started popping up on my feed. Oh, after you YouTube saw that feed. quote? Yeah. Yes. And I was like, I was like, ATMs. I was like, holy crap. Why didn't I think of that? So then I started watching your videos. And I'm like, like, I've been a sale. Like, I've been able to sell myself my entire life. Like, as far as like, you know, when I was young, I did the DJ entertainment thing. And I was, I was always having to pitch myself to clients and, you know, show them presentations and then personal training. Um, it's the same thing. I mean, you're competing. So you do the same thing. You have to, it's, it's a matter of yourself in better than the next guy right so it kind of went hand in hand because i was like okay well this is you know you have to have the capital up front but as long as you have the capital it's a matter of can you talk better than the next guy but 90 percent of the time come to find out the, these business owners hasn't haven't even talked to anybody about this exactly. so you're enlightening them from the thing and then the other plus was is that you're not even selling them anything you're you're giving them an extra stream of income so it's just a win for everybody so then once I got a full understanding of everything that was going on and I watched like a, a, just a painful amount of your videos, like just over, just, you know what I mean? Cause like you get caught in it and then you're just like, Holy crap. It's been like five hours or something. <laughs> and then before you're just like sitting there like a sponge and absorbing all this stuff. And then that's when I started to move, you know, into your actually looking into getting the training. So what made like what made you think about that? Like what made you think about oh, maybe I should get some help with this? Well, the the part where I got caught up because I've very been like, I take pride in doing everything myself. Like yeah, and you're totally entrepreneurial as we know. Yeah. Right. So like you know, with that being said, there's a lot of pride in taking care of all these things yourself. I don't I don't want to say pride. I don't like that word, but like you know what I mean. It's 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 fulfilling to do everything yourself. That's a better word. Um, so the processing was the part the processing and what banks and how to go about you know linking the processors up with your bank accounts all the back end stuff right, right, right. that was the thing and it was like 
I would rather pay for the information to do it right the first time yeah. and say, live through the trial and error of screwing it up the first time, which I think you said you had done where you, yeah. you would, you yeah. know, took money and then invest in it and you realized that it was scaled with how much you were making, mm-hmm. you know, as per as much they were taking. Right. So that was the part where I was like, eh. so then I started looking into what you offer and everything else. And then, um, you know, I was connected with your people and, you know, it all just, like it all just worked out, but it was definitely, um, a good investment on that front because I was safe as far as my first initial investment was a successful one. Right. Right. So what, what, when you were like, okay, I'm thinking about this, what was your biggest concern with becoming a student of mine? Or did you have any? You have to have some, I mean, you just watch them. Uh, you, know, you don't know who the heck I am. Right. Yeah. I mean, I had watched enough of your stuff to where I wasn't necessarily like sketched out for lack of a better term. I wasn't like, I felt like, you know, you watch enough of anybody's content and you feel, you know, a sense of familiarity. You know what I mean? So it wasn't more of that. It was just, I didn't know how much, you know, just cause like being, you know, numbers and like a business guy, I didn't know how much something like that should cost. Right. So it was like, okay, then you have to weigh the knowledge versus, you know, how much should something like this cost? But even then, I think it was, it's a great investment when you're looking at the repercussions of the wrong investment. Right. And then you know what I mean? time too, like you're, 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 so basically what I tell you, you're investing a little bit of money to get back, to get a lot of time. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I would have spent hours probably, I mean, hours, if not, and the stress of just making the right decision yourself when, you know, you pay for your service and it, everything's streamlined. I mean, you right. have, you have all the information given to you. Because sure. I mean, that's what you're paying for. You did that back end research. You put in the time to find out where the right path is. And um, that's what you're paying for at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, what made you officially decide to take that leap and say, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get her training. I'm going I'm to do it. I'm doing it. I'm pulling the trigger. Well, that for me was once I found out the general bar, ballpark of a machine and then once I had read like the cost of the machine itself. And then I kind of, after watching again enough of your videos to know how much generally goes in a machine, it's like, okay, I have the capital for that. Mm-hmm. Then getting your training was kind of the, the cliff jump for me, just as far as like, okay, if I'm going to invest, plus I think is a big deal to a lot of people too, because it's like, okay, if I can buy this training, then it holds you accountable to execute. Because if you hold yourself, I mean, like your own personal drive is great, but it's also good to hold yourself accountable with something like that. And I think it's a lot easier to kick yourself in the ass Mm -hmm. if you go through and you purchase a training like that and you know, it's quality, you know, you're going to get everything because then you literally have no excuse. I mean, you pay for the training and it's like, you have everything you need. What are you going to do with it? So it's like, it's like you're given the sword. Now, what are you going to do with it? Right. As opposed to like, oh, I don't know. I mean, I could go with this processor, but like, it's real easy to talk yourself out of it. If you're, you know, like tripping and falling through it all yourself. Right. Right. So I think that was the biggest thing is just, that was the leap for me. And it was like, okay, if I get this training, I have to go pound the pavement, put in the work. Yeah. And as soon as I, you know, absorbed the final bit of information, which at the time was like the tip of the iceberg for me, that was like the last little bit I felt I needed before I knew enough to go out there and actually tackle everything. Mm-hmm. Um, that was it. And I, that's just what held me accountable for me personally, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think, um, I was, I think I was doing my coaching calls differently when you first got started. Do you remember how long ago you got started? January. January. I don't think I was doing like coaching and accountability calls then, was I? You was had I? like just, you, you were, you were, uh, you did your first one like a couple weeks after I started. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that format now, like with the goals and everything, because I've noticed a huge, huge difference with students and they're moving forward and implementing when we do the accountability and goals. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big thing. Like, like in your, in your training, I mean, not, not like to spoil or anything, but you have to write down your, your goals. I mean, you have yeah. to write down this stuff, but I've, I mean, the past couple of years I've sworn by that. Just writing everything down is like a big part of, I mean, even I've held myself accountable for the past couple of years, just writing stuff down. 
it's makes a huge difference and it's incredible what you can accomplish when you have a target and you know you can't hit a target you won't hit a target you can't see so writing stuff down is a big deal and that was very good to see um as part of the training too yeah i love yeah i love that part and i love that with with the weekly calls now people are starting to write down the goals we go over on the calls because um you know it's really easy for you to bullshit yourself it's not so easy for you to bullshit me too on the call. <laughs> oh yeah. No, you know what I mean? And that's another, that's another dimension of the writing itself. I mean, it, it holds you accountable to your own BS. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Cause you can, you can think yourself in circles and then before you know it, it's been three months and you haven't done a damn thing. Yeah. You know what so I mean? Bad. So to be able to write every day, especially I, I tell people to write once or t- once in the morning and once at night, mm-hmm. you know, write goals for the day and then hold yourself accountable at the end of the day. And then, you know, write six months to a year goals and, then that way you can hold yourself accountable in six months into a year. Love it. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How long did it take you to place your first ATM after you got started? Uh, My first location, it was two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Isn't you a rock star? Two weeks. But I, I, so since I drive so far to work, I got to look at a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew I wanted to keep it local. Mm -hmm. So I kept it within probably 40 minutes of my house. Okay. Yeah. Um, First place that I placed a machine at was a vape shop. Okay. Um, it was very clean. Walked in, I was in and there, in and out of there in five minutes, had a placement date. Um, he didn't want, um, any of the surcharge, anything like that. He was just like, let's see how it goes. Unfortunately, that machine didn't do too well. It happens part of the business. People need to know that. That's part which, of which was a learning thing in general because I mean that was that was a learning curve. Just calling the business owner and being like, Hey, <laughs> I gotta take this out. Cause it's like it's like, you know, it's not personal, but it's like when you're dealing with small businesses, it's like, Hey, I didn't make enough money. Right. No offense to the store. Bad. I imagine you're doing great. But you know, it's like, and then now, now that I've done it a couple of times, you learn that it's just the name of the game. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, for example, I just pulled a machine out of a diner in theory, in theory, it was perfect. Right. Really big morning crowd, super busy lunch crowd, like a medium, like a, um, medium dinner crowd, uh, like ha I'd say like 70% college kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But, it was only making me like a hundred bucks a month. Ugh, yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, uh, and especially now with COVID and everything, they reduce their hours. So I was like, you know, you can't do that. So it's like, I right. told them, it's like, look, you know, it's just the name of the game. So now everything gets easier with time. So. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so how many machines do you have now? Right now I have three that are currently placed and I have a fourth on the way. Nice. Um, I have a, Tattoo shop that is moving into cash only. Um, Wait, what kind of shop was that? Tattoo? Yep. Tattoo okay. shop that's moving into cash only. Um, I'm trying to convince them to move into cash only. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's leaning into it because he said, he was like, man, coronavirus, I took a look at my books and I'm getting destroyed by credit cards. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I tried to tell you because I always include that in my meetings. You know what I mean? And I, I have sheets, Excel sheets of like the uh, actual credit cards you know how they're scaled and everything else yeah. with square and nice. uh, clo- clover and like all that stuff. Um, so yeah, he took a look at his books after that and he ended up kind of like, you know, I kind of pointed out something to him. So he's looking at co- going cash only. Um, and then uh, a cash only barber shop. Nice. Obviously that does, that doesn't do bad at all. And then um, my last one, I just moved it to uh a pizza store, which I told you about on the Facebook group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we'll see how that goes. If that goes well, then he has, you know, four or five more locations for me. Yeah, so that could be potentially great. If it works out, yeah, that'd be a sweet one, yeah. That's a lot of capital to be throwing at something that's not doing good. So exactly, right. we'll see, we'll see about that. So, so you started in January. Now you're seven months into it since we're in, well, almost eight. Um, how much are, and you got three machines. What, what kind of cash flow are you making a month? If you don't mind, mind sharing. Oh uh, yeah, no problem here. So the, 
tattoo shop does about six to eight hundred dollars every month. Okay. So that's not bad at all. I my goal is I'm not gonna pull the machine out of the tattoo shop by any means, but my goal is is to be find places where a machine's making eight hundred to a thousand. I want each machine to be making eight hundred to a thousand. Um so with that being said, obviously by no means am I a veteran, but my ropes and everything like that, that machine's gonna stay there for a while until I start, you know finding higher producing, um, small businesses. So the, the tattoo shop, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I would I never take it out. It's like $16 is pretty sweet though for it. Yeah, of course. Of How course, far no. is it from you? 15 minutes. Oh shit. Yeah, that's yeah, right. exactly. So like for what it is right now in my current situation, it's great. It's yeah. like my, it's like my, um, just like my baseline right now, which is mm-hmm. great. So it's, it's paying for stuff. Um, and then I have the, the pizza place, which is kind of experimental and then the barbershop. So how's the, how's the barbershop doing? Barbershop's like 500, around 500 bucks. Nice. And then the pizza shop you literally just did. So you don't really know yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but that, that one, I I just went out on a limb on just because he had so many potential locations. Mm -hmm. He was like, look, we'll see how this one does. And then I'll write you a contract for like five locations and it's, and he's buying up franchises. So he's like, you'll just be my guy. And I'm right. like, you know, all right, we'll see what happens. But yeah, yeah. And you said you got a fourth one on the way. Where's that one going? The fourth one on the way, um, Chinese restaurant. Nice. Cash only? Yep. Buffet. You know, you know I love this cash only Chinese yeah. restaurant. Yeah. So I saw that and I was like, oh, I know something about those <laughs> historically. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. All right. Very right, cool. So. You're doing pretty well. I mean, and you literally just started in January. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying the best I can. I mean, it's, it's, it's great when you have, when you have your goals written down. You know what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Stuff just pops out at you, as you know. Oh, yeah. Like I saw your post recently. Like you were driving home and you saw the cash only buffet. Literally, that's, today, that's, just, that's, that's, did that's use truly, yeah, that? and that's truly how it is. I mean, you gotta yeah. be, you gotta live, you gotta live the, live the stuff. You know what right. I mean? And when you do. Um, you'll be driving home and you'll see a place and you'll be pissed off at yourself when you get home if you don't call them and turn oh, around. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. If you're not up, if you're not upset, then you need to check yourself because <laughs> you know what I mean. You might not want it that bad. So, <laughs> yeah, and you, you say like I don't just teach you guys. I I literally live it. I do it. So I just made that post like right before you know I think a couple hours before we got on this call. Yeah, exactly. Like, went to the Latin grocery store that didn't turn out too good. Decided to come home. And then uh, past the Chinese spot, called him, and then was like, boop, you turn, going back to the Chinese tour. I said, this is what it is. You know, you're, you're shooting for those great locations. What part of the program did you find most helpful, the, the coaching and the training program? Mm. Um, the writing down the goals is really good. I mean, I, I just, like I said, that was a big thing for me, so it was good for me to see that, that, like, just as far as, like, okay, the person who, you know, yourself who made this training implemented that. So it was like, I agreed from that just on a, you know, a moral basis, you know what I mean? Um, But the biggest thing for me was the why. I get a lot, you know what? I've been, you know, doing a bunch of these student success stories. I get a lot of people say that. Because, because nobody, this is very general, but a lot of people don't, everything's so fast moving nowadays. People don't slow down and think that far. You know what I mean? They really don't. Um, and I try to, you know, I try to do that, but just once again, as you know, somebody who's always onto the next thing and trying to do something all the time, you, you lose sight cause you get so caught up in the current that you kind of lose sight of the five, 10 years or whatever. Right. Um, but it was just for me, that was the thing where it was like, I mean, it took me probably 30 minutes to get up through that page or that section, just because I was like, well, I want to look back at this and be like, okay, I totally did not BS this section. <laughs> like, I want to look back at it, you know, years from now when I have a successful ATM business. Um, like, damn, that's cool. I can yeah. still honor that statement now. Right, for sure. Um, and my why was is just complete and total financial freedom for the sake of my family and friends. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, um, and though I enjoy my nine to five job, it is not my end game by any means. Um, 
IT field is certification based. So the more certifications you have, the more you know, and you know, the more you get paid, the more higher you are in your career. Once I get a certain amount of certifications, if my ATM company is making enough, I'm out. Right. Like, I'm out of there. I mean, you can always go back and get your nine to five job back. For sure. You, know? you can always go back. That's not, that's not what it's about for me. I'd rather live in a third of my income financially free. Like I'd rather live in a third of my W2 income financially free than be, you know, slaving away up there eight hours a day, yeah. um, you know, on someone else's time. Freedom but, is, is something else. Like when you, when you have that freedom and that choice, it's, uh, it's something else you're, you're going to, you're going to, yeah, and, that, and that's, that's the end goal is just being able to be flexible. Okay. Okay. You want to travel, throw more money in the machines. Let's go. You know what I mean? Just exactly. being able to do that. Um, and even farther down the line, I'm only 23, but farther down the line, when I have kids, how beautiful would it be to be able to just spend damn near all day with them? Beautiful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I did just, not know you, know, you were only 23 as well. Yeah. And you know, like all these, all these new things today. I've never seen you before. And he's a good looking, <laughs> you guys can all agree. He's a good looking guy. He's 23. <laughs> like he's got it together. <laughs> oh, stop. You're going to make me blush now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's something that I think you really got to think about that, especially cause there's nothing that's mo like money is not going to keep you motivated through this until it's successful. It's, too, it's too like a long game thing. And I mean, I went to God damn, probably 30, 30, 40 businesses before I got a yes, you know, yep. and I didn't even care. I was just like, look, you know, half of them were good businesses. Just like I, to face experience the worst is walking into nail salons and they all turn around and look at you and you're like um manager manager please and they're, and they're all just looking at you like you got nine heads and like, you know I, I i'm still getting used to that but it's like just just building up the courage to be able to walk straight into a business with a folder right. you know what i mean and just ask for a manager which i mean they can pick up on your confidence right away yeah. It's like, I wouldn't even want to watch myself do it January. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't even want to watch it. It's a, I'd have to get out and walk out of the room. And it's like, <laughs> now, now it's just like, Hey, Hey, hey it's a good business. You know, I always got a stack of folders in my car with, you know, the machine and the fact sheet and business cards. Yeah. I just yeah. grab the folder, walk on in. You know what I mean? And I think that that's what leads to more successes down the line is obviously you build up that confidence and everything else. But, um, yeah. I mean, just back to the why is just, I think you got to think about that long term, And I think that's very important. And that was my favorite part of this section for that reason, because that, I think that why, as long as you don't BS it, and I think it's very important, important that you don't yeah. is gonna keep gas in your tank. You know what I mean? Cause if you write there, you know, Oh, I want to buy a boat and make some money. You know yeah. what I mean? It's All like, right. okay, cool. You might make enough money. Okay. How much is a boat? Like 25 grand. Cool. What are you gonna do after that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But when, when it's just, I want to buy a boat and I want to make some money. When you hear those, you know, 29 or 30 no's, actually you might not even make it to 29, 30 no's. If you're wise, I want to buy a boat. Like you might hear five no's and be like, all right, I'm done. I'm exactly. out. Yeah, long. exactly. And that, that's what I, that's what I mean by like, you're yeah. not going to have enough gas. You're, you're going to yeah. run out of gas. Cause it's, you know, it, it, there's no way around it. it. It sucks getting those when you start out. You know what I mean? You take it like personally, you're kind of like, damn, I mean, all right, you know, <laughs> yeah. and you don't know how to handle it. And you're like, I don't know whether to call them back. And like, luckily the ATM group's there to like answer some of your questions. You're just like stumbling and stumbling around, you know what I mean? And, um, but so, what's it, what's it like to, you know, have a, a couple ATMs making your money, some making you pretty decent money so far. Like how has it like, impacted you so far so for me it's just fun you know what i mean for me right now i know my end goal i know where i want it to go but i think the biggest thing for me is i get very analytical and like serious about things but what i've really learned with this especially since it's such a long play you know emphasis mm -hmm. on long play mm -hmm. you have to learn to have fun with it because if if you, if you're just stressing out all the time, and I mean, it is important to look for that right business. It is important to make sure that, you know, you have the capital to put in the machine. It's important to make sure you're not 
wasting time and, you know, making sure it's always in the best location, but just have fun with it. You know what I mean? Like enjoy, enjoy the business, enjoy talking to the business owners, enjoy the business owners as personalities and not just like, um, not just like a meal ticket, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and there's such thing as a great location and a bad business owner. That's another yeah. thing. I, I came across that recently. He had a great location, but he was an asshole. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He was just not a good person to deal with. And that's a whole nother thing to think about. Mm -hmm. It's like, do I want to deal with this person? Is this person, right. is this person positive to my life? Because you're dealing with people. You're still in a customer service business. For sure. So you still have to look at these things, but yeah, it's just be prepared and confident and, and feel okay walking away and saying no. Exactly. And, and, and there's power in that too. You know, the, yeah. the biggest negotiation, the biggest negotiating point you can do is walk away. Walk away. And yep. there's been plenty of times where I've had hard negotiating business owners who want freaking one fifty for your $3 surcharge. And it's just like, look, man, you know, I can go take this machine and put it somewhere else and give the guy 50 cents. Right. You know, and you don't want to do it. You walk away and then he calls you two days later. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, but the, that is all things that you learn after you go through 50 to a hundred locations and get your, you know, the crap slapped in slapped at you and freaking you're humiliated and you go home and you're like, man, screw this. I don't even know what's going on. You know, or you come on a coaching call at me, <coughs> at me y'all. You'd be like, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And it's just emphasis on the long game and be able to take a step back every once in a while and just be like, look, I'm having fun. <laughs> and you know, <coughs> obviously I'm blessed enough to where I'm in a situation where I can have fun with it and I'm not in like, you know, dire need to go out there and hustle. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, I think I know your answer, but why do you think you've been so successful with the actual coaching and training program? Um, personally, I just think, I, I mean, it's going to be personal for every person, but it's just how bad do you want it? I mean, it, it's up to you. you. Like I said earlier, you're given the sword. What are you going to do with it? You yeah. Know? And I think it really comes down as the person who made the program, I imagine you've seen people come and go. You yeah, know, and, it, and it's I'm just, telling you, it pisses me off. Like Nothing pisses me off more like someone getting my training and not doing anything with it. Right, it's like wasted potential. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah. Just, it's just, what are you going to do with it? You know, um, the people watching, Carrie gives you all the information you need in this training. Um, and it's just a matter of what you do with it. If you hold yourself accountable, there's everything you need in there to do whatever you want to make out of it. Mm -hmm. You're going to get exactly what you put out of it. Yeah. It does have a snowball effect, just like most things in life. And if you stick with it and you stay with it. You'll see, you know, financial results and it'll be lucrative for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you're, you're right though. I mean, it's what they put, what, what you put into it, what you're going to get out of it, you know, because I know the training works, you know, the training works like all these people are, um, um, examples of the training that working, right? But it, it just, I know being in this industry, the coaching and training industry, that there's a certain number of people that are going to buy your training that won't do anything. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah, I got their money. That's not how I am. I'm like, I want you to do the damn thing. I want you to do what you set out to do because it'll change your, it has the ability to change your life. No, for sure. For yeah. sure. And I mean, um, touching on that, the, that's apparent, you know, you wanting everybody to do well is very apparent through the Facebook group that you get access to, um, once buying the program, that's very apparent just by everybody in there. And I mean, like attracts, like most people in that Facebook group are the same way. You know yeah. what I mean? Everyone, yeah. that Facebook group is an encyclopedia of information. It's like Google with I'm feeling lucky times 10. <laughs> like it's like it's like it's like there's just the minute you ask anything someone's done it someone's been there done that there's people with um like will for god dang how many atms do you have now like 15 or 20 or something we just did a we just did a success story yesterday he's got 11 now yeah he's great he's a character um and the uh the one um woman you had on here that you did with the arcade oh kimberly 
Yeah, she's great. She's just like she she shows you that I mean you can just sometimes you just trip and fall into a great location. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it works out, but she's making it work despite driving an hour, right? Yeah. I watched her thing. She drives an hour to a location, which I mean, that's a stressful situation when you're first starting out because right. you don't know how fast money's gonna leave. You know, right. you don't know how fast money's gonna go in and out of the machine. So props to her. Um, but yeah, there's just someone who's been there, done that in the Facebook group. And it, that, that resource is probably my favorite ongoing resource. And that's, that's a big bulk of, um, the benefit right there. Yeah. And they're so supportive, like they're so supportive of one another, right? They're just yeah, yeah, yeah. each other in there, which is huge. And that, that's the thing is like, of course, after, you know, clicking on your videos and being a part of that community, you get all of the wit, the wash of freaking. ATM gurus on your social media afterwards, you know, due to, you know, data mining and all that. So, mm-hmm. Oh my God. I, I would say, I would say just, if you're looking at all those guys, just, just, just stop thinking about it and just get Carrie's program. <laughs> Cause it's going to be a long time before you get the Rolex and the Lambo anyway. So just go ahead and just, just go ahead and just, you know, cut yourself. Oh, shit. That was funny. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of that, let me ask you this. What would you say to someone that is considering working with me? Maybe they're like on the fence. Like, what would you say, say to them? <laughs> After I was done talking there off, I'd be like, just do it, man. Just, just, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. But I mean, what I will say is Carrie gives you every, like I said before, she gives you everything that you need from an information standpoint. Um, mm-hmm. If there's anything you need, like from A to Z, you'll have that information and that's a huge weight taken off your shoulders. And that's what, that's why I did the training was just for that. I, the the big section of, I don't know. Okay, great. I know how to go out there and pound the pavement and sell myself and the business and everything else. But then you have all the back end, the processing, the, the establishing of the business, all that stuff. And you can get screwed on that. And that's nothing to play with. You want to make sure your money's going somewhere where it counts. Um, Just do it. She gives you everything you need make it happen. I mean, that's pretty much it. And if I was talking to somebody and I had to tell somebody to get your program, I've been there, done that. And you know, I, I can vouch that it completely checks out. Everything she says checks out the information checks out and there's no downside aside from if you make downsides. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, I want to touch on one more thing with someone, anyone else working a W2 job that I think is a um, pretty good thing to touch on too just making that work, the money that is in. So my personal accounts are with a different bank than my ATM accounts, my mm-hmm. ATM accounts with um, that money that comes in every month from the surcharges and the, all the money that the ATM business makes to say, again, I only have three machines at the moment, but all the money that that mach, that those machines make, I have not touched that money. Good for you that money stays there. And I think that's very important to touch on, especially when you're starting out, you know, just in my situation, if you have a job, like I said, if you're trying to freaking, you know, pay the bills and feed your kids then this doesn't apply. But if you have the luxury of being able to leave that money in that account and let it grow, the way I've been doing it is, is using saving up my W2 income to a point where I can use that money to buy a machine. And then I use the money that, has built up in the ATM account to fill the machine. Gotcha. So that's how I've been able to um, keep the business growing per se. Yeah. And it's like, I won't. And that was another big adjustment thing is it's not, you, you can't go out there and just rush businesses either. You got to be analytical about it. Cause if, okay, cool. Maybe I might be able to sell myself you know, four or five more locations, but do you have the capital for those locations? Right. You know, and that's a whole nother mindset in of itself, being able to pull yourself back, Mm -hmm. you know? So being able to look and be like, okay, I need to pull myself back because I don't have the capital, even if I got this machine to fill it. Right. And I think it's very important that you don't get strung out, you know, say you're really good and you land five locations and then you're in debt because you can't fill them all. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just how I'm running things. And I think that's good to touch on because I really had to think about that myself. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I wish when I started, I didn't do that. Like I. And that's just patience. That's what I learned with this thing. Mm-hmm. Is patience. patience is huge with this because you can go out and pound the pavement all you want, but you have to think about that. You got to 
stand back and be patient about it. Yeah. I, I just love that you are 100% of your profits. You're putting right back into the business because your full-time job is keeping the lights on, paying the bills, feeding you, you know, doing everything cool, doing everything that you need to do, but you're letting this baby just grow, 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 grow. Exactly. And that's what it is. That's a baby. You gotta, feed, gotta feed the baby. You know? this, yeah, this baby is the thing that's going to give you the choice to leave this one if you want to. Exactly. And until, until it, I told myself until it outweighs the income monthly on my W2 job, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it. Love it. I freaking love that, man. And you know what? That takes discipline. No, it does because you watch that grow and then, you know, I mean, life happens. There's things you want to do mm -hmm. and you're, you might be pinched. I mean, I don't care. It's all relative. I don't care how much money you make you're never going to make enough money. You know what I mean? There's, it's always relative. There's always going to be something you want to do. There's going to be something you want to buy. And um, you all, with the ATM company, the more successful it gets, the bigger that temptation gets to move money out of there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just, you gotta, if, you, if once again, if you're in my situation, you have to be disciplined enough to not do that. 100%. 100%. I just want to touch on that because I think that's a very important thing. I think it's awesome. And I did not do that when I started and I wish I did. Yeah. So I, I love that. And I wish, and I tried it in the training. I tried to say, Hey, I didn't do this when I started, but you know, if you're in a good spot, please do this. And you're, you're doing that, you know, which is yeah. amazing. That's the way I wish more people would do it, but I have a feeling a lot of people don't do it that way because they don't have the discipline. But if you could be disciplined like that, yeah. And I mean, that's, that's, the, I, and, and the more you do, the less you wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Swear by that. And yeah. doing is discipline. I mean, yeah. cross the board. I mean, if you, you can stay disciplined, if I leave that money in that account, I am maximizing or minimizing the time it's going to take for me to get to that point. Yeah. And I mean, that's how you got to think about it. Love but, it. Love it. <laughs> Let me ask you this, knowing what you know now, would you do everything all over again? 100%. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I, I think the only thing I would, I mean, if I had to do it again, I just wouldn't have any of the, the what if, you know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of people. Yeah. And I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, you gotta, if this is your first cliff jump, you got a whole lot of cliff jumping to do after you get into <laughs> the training. Right. Because like I said, when you walk into that nail salon and there's nine people staring at you, you don't know what the hell's going on. All the words just leave your mouth and you've said nothing. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna realize you're on the edge of a cliff real quick. <laughs> and you either gotta speak or look stupid. So <laughs> And and it's okay. You just learn and move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean I, I bombed a couple locations, looked very stupid, but you know, there's plenty of businesses out there, luckily. So exactly, exactly. it all it all works out. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time with me today. I've had a lot of fun. Um, no, thank you. Thank you. This was great. I mean, going from stumbling across your videos at two in the morning and starting your training to being able to talk to you in person is, um, is humbling. So it's, thank you. It's awesome. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. And let me ask you, do you, do you have any, um, do you have any final words for anybody that's, that's watching? Um, if you're thinking about doing it, just do it. Um, of course, make sure your financials are right and you can afford to do it. Be analytical. When you do get into it, your first machine and your first initial investment is the most important one. Um, everything gets easier. It has a snowball effect. You get what you give. Write your goals and just hold yourself accountable. That's pretty much it. Love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Athen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, guys, you told me his real name and I, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do yeah. it. I respect him too much to try to do it so he told me yeah. I, I appreciate that i always knew in school i always knew uh when my name was about to be called because they'd look at the list and then they'd be like <laughs> i'd be like here <laughs> oh, yeah i'm here don't bother don't bother Every time, yeah <laughs> so. all right awesome well i appreciate you Athan. i appreciate you taking the time and uh telling everybody your thoughts and i cannot wait to hear about the pizza the pizza joint how that's doing and then, of yeah. course, your, your Chinese spot. So definitely keep us posted, all right? Yeah, for sure. Will do. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. Thank you. You too.